Bones Klinger. How are you, sir? Thank you for joining us. I am absolutely tremendous. Thank you guys for having me. How about you? Our pleasure, man. Big fans, big fans. I know I was just saying to you about your photo of Bobby, my uh, photo of Adam Page. It's, uh, it's one of the best photos ever. I just said to Callum, it's just me and Adam Page, and we can just see your head at the side of us. It's, uh, I'm just going to check. <laughs> my picture now as well because I want to know if you're photo bombing mine too. <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking bones in it. That that was it. <laughs> everywhere, I'm everywhere. It was great, man. I just I just noticed it. I, I was like, my God, yes. So yeah, I've got a picture with you both now. That's how I, how I class this. But yeah, man. Amazing. Um, how are you at the minute? Are you in Are you in Germany at the moment? Yes, I am in Germany. We already have the lockdown, so I'm not doing that much. I was just moving flats now. So, right. yeah, so I'm, I'm living together with my girl now. And, uh, yeah, we're, we're, we're pretty happy campers. I'd say Hell, that. yeah. Well, yeah. That's it. Yeah, I mean, lockdown, we're, we're the same at the moment. We're in lockdown. I don't know what's going on. I don't think the government knows what's going on. It's just uh, <laughs> it's a joke, man, but... How have you found it with lockdown? I mean, getting getting work and, and getting booked, has it been okay? Well, um, well, I can't can't do any wrestling work or like like personal trainer work, but what I actually do as well. So but I had um um I did a podcast, like like a children podcast, and I'm mm. one of one of the bad guys. Awesome. Right? Yeah, that that's that's truly amazing. So we have some some other projects planned and I'm really happy that I got into that because, like, um, my teacher, my English teacher in fifth grade, she said, "Why don't you do like, 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 like voiceovers for, for, uh, for, for children's stuff?" And I was just like, at that time, I was thinking she, she's just joking. But for some reason, I had put it on my bucket list. Yeah, and, and like, I, I, I made a check on it, and then that's it's amazing. I. I hope I, I'm gonna meet her someday again, just to thank her because yeah. uh, it was an opportunity and a new opportunity, and it for for some reason it made me like believe myself to do something mm. like that because I never have done stuff like that. You know, you, you just go in there, you stand in front of a microphone, and they want you to to, to say some some sentence. Uh, yeah, but it was amazing. That's yeah. cool. Uh, you definitely have the voice for um, voiceover stuff. Like Thank you. I can't, I can't imagine me or Jamie ever picking up voiceover work. But <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> I, I, I pretty much wouldn't understand it though. But you, you have the voice for it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> we'll take that. We'll take that. <laughs> so obviously, obviously, you're from Germany. Um, what was the wrestling scene like for you growing up? Was it was it WWE? Was that primarily what you got? Um. Yes. Like at that time, it was still WWF. Uh. Yeah. WWE. Like I was four years old, and my my parents were like skipping through the channels, and mm. uh, um, yeah, we stopped by, and there was wrestling on, and the first one I saw was Randy Macho Man Savage, and I was I was fascinated. That was like like falling in love with the character, the, the, the persona, because he was just like larger than life. Like yeah. it. it it made me feel like, like I want to see more of this guy, right? Yeah. So, so I was like, like, like seeing me for four years, and uh, and I was like, I want to do this, I want to do this. My parents, of course, were like, yeah, you have to do like a normal job and stuff like that. Well, yeah. kind of worked out. I, I, I'm now doing stuff like that, but um, back in that time, it was like, like something I was dreaming about. Yeah, and I grew up with a uh, WWE. Uh, we also had WCW on, and uh, not that much. Uh, like it became more like like more later on, yeah, like yeah. Uh, on TNT, because we had like Friday. Like, like for some reason, it was like decoded. So like on Fridays, we had like first two hours of fun uh, of, of of Nitro, and then when they they stocked up to three hours plus Thunder. We had on a Friday night, we had from nine o'clock till whatever it was. Uh, yeah, we had Nitro and Thunder. That was amazing. That's, I, yeah, I, I always find it interesting uh, when we speak to people from other countries and like what their exposure to wrestling was. Because for us, like you, it was always WWF and WCW. 
Um, but then there's some countries where they, they didn't get much WWF or WCW. It wasn't shown. And then you're finding out like how they got into it. It's always it's always an interesting subject. But you said Randy Savage was the first wrestler you saw. Absolutely. It did he become one of your favorites from that then? When you were hooked to it, did he it was he one that you drew to? All time, all time favorite. Like from that moment on, he actually was my first wrestling figure as well from the Hasbro Hasbro <laughs> figures. So I, I got him him and the million dollar man. Uh, so I could beat up the million dollar man. But yeah, it was it was he had something special. Mm. So so that that was like I don't know what it was at that point, but it was like this guy is my guy. So there you go. I think it's interesting you said that as well because I do I do feel like there's some Randy Savage in your persona. Absolutely, absolutely. What, and that what I've seen of you. It's 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 more a, a homage because yeah. I wanna I wanna uh like like Still, though, making my own, but still having something of one of the greatest of all time in. So people who still watch wrestling can be remembered to the greats of like like Randy Savage. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because like, like it was such an order for me to always watch his matches. And I was like always into it. And if just one one guy just like looks him, uh, looks him up and goes like, hey, he's like that guy. And then he finds some old stuff and watches, watches that. Yeah, I mean, why not? Like, for for me, it's it's something to um to to let the uh, legend live on. Yeah, because in a way, I guess you could say you you might not be wrestling if you didn't flick onto that channel that day. You know, you you probably would have found it eventually. But Absolutely. there's always Absolutely. the possibility you might not be a wrestler without Macho Man Randy Savage. That's so it. it's cool that you you have that like uh, homage to to you know to honor him. Yeah. And I, I don't, I don't want to take the piss out of that, like, like, like making like, like a joke or something like that. I, I totally take it serious because, like, if you take something serious, what, what, what would you love? You would never like do something which would hurt, what, 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 uh, what hurts. Yeah, you know what yeah, I mean. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Absolutely, absolutely. And I was the same as you. Macho Man was my guy as well. I was. Uh... I think you were the same age doing some research. I'm I'm 36, um, right. and I started watching when I was four as well, and it was Randy Savage for me. There um, you go. So there we go, man. I, I'm totally with you on that. Totally with you on that. Um, so wh when did it become a thing then? When did you you start training? Um, well, I started training when I was 19 because it was pretty hard to find a school in Germany. Yeah, but I did. I did. I did some like I, I played some football before. That wasn't a thing for me. So I did some karate. wasn't a thing for me. I did some taekwondo. wasn't a thing for me. I did some amateur wrestling. was something, but it was not the thing I wanted to do. Yeah. And then um, we have uh, the uh, the papers called Power Wrestling in Germany. Yeah. 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 Um, like it's the only wrestling magazine in Germany. So and they had an article that that uh, like about four or five hours from my place they have a wrestling school. Yeah. So I was just uh, like, okay, let let let's just try that. I mean, what what can happen? Either I like it or I or I hate it. So that one day I make my my way there, and uh, they made me bump on the the little dojo mats. And they said if you can bump there, you can bump anywhere. But I wanted to go in the ring, and they were like, no 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 no. <laughs> you have to bump there. And I was like, I was totally hot. So I bumped and I bumped and I bumped. I, my, my back was hurting. And then on the, after the first day, they said, well, see you, see you at the next training. And I was like, yeah, but I didn't go in the ring now. When is the next training? Well, it's either next week or you come back tomorrow. And I was like, well, I just come back tomorrow. I just go five hours back and, and did the same thing the day after again because I just wanted it. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, yeah, because like at that time I didn't know anybody there, and I didn't want to bother anybody. But uh, it was the thing, and like my back was hurt. I didn't care because, you know, you have to sacrifice sometimes to like 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 get what you want, and uh, it was absolutely worth it. I would do the same thing over and over again. Uh, what was it like when you took your first bumps? Then uh, what which <laughs> one did you find? Uh... <laughs> painful because because <laughs> like like bumping and breathing out is not 
like, you know, a normal thing you do. Uh. No. So I kind of kept it in, and I was just laying there like, yeah, yeah okay, <laughs> okay, okay, that, that's cool, and uh, <clears throat> does that hurt all the time like this? And they're like, yeah, yeah. I've, I've heard running the ropes can hurt quite a bit too when you first start. Yeah. It is, it is, and you will have like marks on your on your back. It kind of looks like somebody like whipped you. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, like like the first time I came back home, and my parents looked at me like, "Where the hell were you?" <laughs> and I was like, "Yes." <laughs> <laughs> but it was worth it, though. You enjoyed every moment of it. Absolutely, absolutely. I do miss it right now so much because. I love to entertain the people. I love them, like, either cheering for you or booing you, just to interact with them. You know? You can, it's, tell, you can tell just from the times we've seen you. I think we've maybe seen you three times in person. But those three times, we all agreed we're with, with a group of friends. You had a personality which drew us to you. Um, we all said we had uh, vibes of, like, The Undertaker. Um, yeah. Your match with Karen Noir, for example, reminded me a lot of when The Undertaker wrestled with Jeff Hardy. Um, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it was like that respect thing going on. Um, yeah. And at the end, The Undertaker, you know, shook his hand and was like, yeah, this is great. Like, two superstars in the ring. It was you and Karen Noir. Blew us away, that match. Um, Thank you. And- like, Noir, like, like saying that, he is, he is a character. He knows how to play it off. And and it's amazing to see him evolve. Yeah. Seriously, like, I, like how, how long is he in the business right now? Uh, three years, four years, would you say? Three years, yeah. yeah. And make, making such an impact is something mm. special. Just seeing him at like, his entrance, like, like I made my entrance before him, and then I was in the ring, and I was just like, wow. Yeah. That, I had goosebumps, so that means something. And uh, yeah, he plays it up very well. Yeah, like um, that whole match, start to finish with the, uh, and literally from the entrance to the end, usually it's just what happens in the ring, but with both of you, is the entrances too. And yeah. he's definitely got something unique in that entrance. Like a lot of wrestlers, they can have an entrance which works and that becomes their whole thing, you know, yes. like, um, and they are just an entrance, no disrespect, but that's what people know them for. With Karen Noir, people know him for an entrance, but also because he's fantastic in the ring. Um, you were saying earlier you want to mix it up with him again soon. Obviously, he is still the progress champion. I mean, uh, where, where do you reckon we might be able to see you versus Karen Noir in the future? Sounds like a plan. I like the idea. I like it. Yeah, man. I, I I, I like any place, anywhere, anytime. Yeah, I mean, I I could see you with that Progress World title over your shoulder, you know, just I'm saying. Surprised. It hasn't happened already. That, I genuinely <laughs> have no idea how that hasn't happened. What a shame. What a shame. <laughs> let's, let's, say, let's say COVID uh, 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 was working against us. Yeah, I can imagine. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, with your training and stuff, you, went, you, you wrestled for TNA and you did the yes. good check challenge. How did that come about with TNA? What was that like, that experience? Well, it was amazing. Like, um, they had their first Impact Tour in 2009. So they were as- asking me uh, if I want to do the, the Dortmund show, like, as, as a dart match against an, yeah. another German. Uh, uh, his name is Carsten Tretschmer. And uh, so, yeah, we, we had, like, our, our dart match there b- before the regular show, which was amazing. And then... Uh, they were like taking taking our uh, uh, stuff and and we were staying in contact, blah blah blah, whatever. Uh, then in 2011, I went again to London to like a like a seminar, gut check seminar thingy, whatever it was. Yeah. Uh, yes. With uh, what's his name, uh, Dilo Brown. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And then we were like taping some stuff, and and then I didn't hear from them back then because they had some, you know, they, there's always stuff going on. And then at one point I had an email and they were like, yeah, we, we want to put you in that gut check thing. And I was like, yeah, just whatever. It, yeah. And, and they were like, yeah, yeah, but you have to, to like promote that stuff. And I was like, yeah, what, 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 what is that? You know, like I, I didn't know what it was. And they were like, you, you're the only German in the, 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 the online gut check challenge. And uh, you have like 300 or whatever, how many guys there are. 
And I was like, are you kidding me now? I was, I was like, holy shit, okay. Uh, yeah, let, let, let's see what I can do. So, yeah, I, I tried to promote as much as I can. I probably annoyed so much people with, yeah. uh, with posting stuff because, yeah. you know, it, 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 I, I just wanted it. And it, it's like, okay, if I have to post it like 5,000 times, I'm going to do it 5,000 times. And if they don't like me, they either like, you know, they, they throw me out of their friends list or they help me. You know, or they just ignore it, whatever. Yeah, and uh, at the end, I, I I won that gut check, which was like uh, pretty damn awesome. I didn't know what to what what what's gonna be the follow up, but then they contacted me like for the uh, for their tour they had in two thousand fourteen, and they worked me in in the the one and only pay per view. I had um, I had a little segment in Impact. I had the explosion match with. Uh, uh, Christopher Daniels. Mm -hmm. um, then we had some talks uh, for like further ongoing stuff, but then some management was 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 changing. But then I came back in 2016 and 2017. Like it just like you know it went on and on and on. Like I stayed in contact with them, and they were always nice. They always gave some advice. And the good thing was like I know else know since 2008, and. Yeah. Uh, since then, he was like following my stuff and always like like giving me a good advice and and helpful things. Like without him, I wouldn't be like where I am right now. Same goes for Doug Williams. He always was the one who like 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 reached out. He was the first one, like the first professional I talked in two thousand four. Like on AOL Instant Messenger, I had a question because I was like, okay. I don't know anybody, but I know Doug Williams because I saw some stuff of him and I, I texted him and he took his time, you know, to, to help me out, to give me some advice. So, uh, thank you very much, Doug. Like, I really, really appreciate that. I'm really grateful for that. Same goes for, for, for Al Snow. Um, without him, I seriously wouldn't be where I am. And I mean that in a way, like mentally, it's sometimes really challenging to be in wrestling, because like the ups and downs, like sometimes you don't have to do a mistake and like like you don't you don't do a mistake, but it you think you did something mm. and it works it, it kind of works yourself like like it works itself in. Uh, but he like talked me out of that stuff and uh, like made me realize that wrestling the wrestling business sometimes they look for like a for a big guy with small hands and the, on the on the other day they looked for a small guy with big hands yeah yeah right? yeah yeah well um a guy you mentioned then as well uh christopher daniels what, what was it like working with, with christopher daniels amazing guy amazing guy like they actually um wanted to have the match 70 30 for him so he, that he like dominates me for like like 70 percent Mm. And uh, we had we had an agent going on there, and he just went to the agent and said, "It's his time to shine." We just put his stuff in, and I'll just mine how, however I want it, right? Yeah. So right. that was that was something I I really looked up to because he he didn't have to do that, you know. That's so cool, like do that, just go out of his way so you can still absolutely. And I, seriously, that that made me show like behind the the, the character. The person Christopher Daniels, yeah, the person. how much he cares for wrestling, and how much he cares when you 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 know you know you are into the wrestling. You know you want the other guy to look good as well. That's how wrestling yeah. works. Sure, yeah, I, I've I've heard that before. Like, um, if if you beat, for lack of a better term, somebody like a nobody, then you beat a nobody. But if you beat a guy who took you to your limit, you beat a tough guy, and yeah. you know that makes you look better as well. So, yeah, it's good to know, like, there's, there's people in the business who, you know, not everyone's looking out for themselves. Everyone's trying yeah. to help each other. Yeah. There are, yeah. So, there are so many guys like that. Seriously. Um, like, like, seeing it from, like, the guys who are superstars, they try to care more for you that you look good because they know they already look good. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Make, does that make sense? Yeah, that makes yeah. sense. Yeah, sure. It's it's yeah. a, a very selfless thing to do as well, isn't it? Like to absolutely. Like yeah. 
Like just just to to name one guy, it's uh, Drew Galloway, Drew McIntyre. Seriously, like um, I know him for so long now, and he never changed. He was always the guy. Like I I I, I uh, started to know in what was that 2006, 2007, or something like that. Same same counts for for Cesaro. Like I yeah. I know since 2005, and. Uh, uh, he, he's still the same kind of guy he was then. He's just still joking around, stuff like that. Like, when I was over for TNA, I don't know if I can say, ah, I don't care. It was his free time. <laughs> so uh, he took his time, like, for a, for a whole day to spend with me. Mm. And I, I haven't seen him for, like, like, four or five years. So that was something really, really cool. Well, I was saying earlier, me and Jamie were, um, were thinking this. This it just reminded me when you said about Christopher Daniels. Obviously, now he's in AEW. Yes. And AEW is doing fantastic. But they're Absolutely. also open to bringing in people from all countries, you know, any background. And I'm sure I've seen you posting recently about your interest in AEW. It's somewhere we could definitely see you. I mean, that yeah. rematch with Christopher Daniels could be on the cards, you know. It, Absolutely. It, obviously, I know it's a stupid question. You're going to be interested in it. But... What's your interest in AEW? What is it about AEW in particular that like draws you to it? They care about the characters. They they care so much more about the wrestling. It's not not the stories. Yeah. It's the it's the wrestling itself. They make it make it. They they make you believe in it. Like mm-hmm. like seeing like seeing uh, Cody against uh, Dustin Rhodes. Oh it, yeah. Jesus Christ! They beat the hell out of each other. Yeah. It it, it yeah. brought me back it brought me back to the old times, right? Yeah. It made me made me feel like like yes, that's the wrestling I love. Like the the product, the WWE product at the moment, I don't I don't get it because like I love I love the eighties nineties, started yeah. the two thousands, but um, I'm I'm more more the guy who looks who watches like uh, old WCW stuff, and it's not meaning that in a bad way, but like AEW has that touch on it, and it's like. Like it can, it it's a, it's something which 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 um which which tickles me. You know, it's it's like, yes, I want to be a part of that because there are so many guys I wrestled before and they are not like getting holded back, so they can show yeah. how good they are. They can show their moves. They can show their characters. I mean, I had a, I don't know if you know that I had a match against uh, Brian Cage and it, it was uh, raining. It's infamous. Rain match, we call it, because like that was oh, yes, yes. that was the only match at the show. It was like like a like a um, open air show where it started to rain, and we, mm-hmm. we said, <clears throat> before we locked up, we were like, okay, we can we can go like like fifty percent, or we do like all all in, and we went all in, and like the people appreciated it, and it was like really awesome. If you want to watch it, it's on YouTube. You can find it on on, on YouTube. I'm gonna make a note of that and watch it live. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely, it's it's tremendous. But you will see the rain which just comes down. It's like, but we, we we don't go slower. We just keep on going, keep on going, keep on yeah. going. Yeah, and um, the thing is, how they work their their characters, like um, Co- like like Cody himself, Cody Rhodes, he knows how to put people over, like. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Bobby Allen and, and stuff like that. It's amazing. Like, like it's the the, te- the 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 sorry, it's the details in between. What I love. It's not just match. It's the details they put in there. And uh, what I like about um, that feud, Darby Allen and Cody, is it it didn't go for the typical cliche. The both won one match, and then you know Darby got the third or something. It, they did it yeah. where um, Cody won the first three matches they had. You know, and it took three matches for Darby to learn how to beat Cody, and that told so much more because when he finally did beat him, you were like, "Yeah, you you believe that he'd grown as a person and learned how to beat him," and it right. meant so much more um, than being a predictable. They both win one match and then somebody wins the third. So yeah, I absolutely agree. The storytelling is amazing. It's all about the storytelling. That's that's what people you know yet yeah, like. When you bring somebody to wrestling who haven't seen wrestling before, and they understand the story which is going on in the ring or on the shows, 
you do your job right. You know, yeah. it's like it's like watching a movie but being interactive in it. Yeah, it, it's um, I think uh, I can't remember who we were speaking to recently who said it's like doing uh, Broadway but with um, fighting. It's like the closest you'll get to doing Broadway where you've got that instant interaction with a crowd. Absolutely. Yeah, it's it's such a fascinating sport. Really, really, it's the only the only form of entertainment where you can do that. There's nothing else like it in the world. Even mixed martial arts isn't. You're not really telling a story with mixed martial uh, arts. It, it. But with wrestling, you have the choice to tell a story. And the thing is, wrestling is always there when you're happy or when you're sad. Yeah, yeah, you can, yeah. You can watch you can watch it, and you can make yourself feel happy when when you see your superstar win, right? Yeah, but, yeah. But like, like, follow the story. Follow the story. It's like, like a soap opera when when you watch it. You know, you see the bad guy winning, you see the bad guy winning, but there is the good guy, and he got you. It's the one constant in life, isn't it? Wrestling. Absolutely. You've always, always got wrestling, whether you're happy, sad, whatever. You've yeah. always got wrestling to cheer you up. And I don't, honestly don't know what I'd do without wrestling. I know that might sound sad, and I'm sure we all agree, but I don't know what I'd do without wrestling. Same here. Wrestling my first love, so there you go. Yeah, I'm with you. I 100% agree with that. But yeah, AEW, that's what I love. It's the long-term storytelling. Yes. I think that's not something WWE don't do anymore. Um, and that's what I love. I love that. I love watching it, and then all I'm thinking about is, I can't wait for Dynamite next week. I want to see what's going on. That's the long -term. Like you say, it's a soap opera. It's the long-term storytelling. Um I can see you there, man. I really can. I, I can see you there. I think you belong I there. I really, really do think it's going to happen. I, I know you not obviously know more about your career than I do, but it, I can definitely just see it happening. Like You fit into that AEW bubble well. Like You've got the, the character, the look, and the in-ring, and I'm sure that's what they're looking for. So all the best to you, and I hope you get it. Thank you very much. And now, let's face it, even if, even if you didn't set foot in the AEW ring, it's, I'm sure you're still going to kick ass everywhere you go. So, Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm the most dangerous man in European wrestling. I will find my way. And if, the, if, if there's a door locked, I will just kick the window in. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <Hell yeah. laughs> now, obviously, you said Europe as well, but you've wrestled in Japan as well. Yeah. Um, what, what was that like in Japan? I mean, that style of wrestling, is, is that something that you like as well, that strong style? Uh, I do like strong style, absolutely. But, like, the fans, they, they uh, I was, I was kind of shocked because, like, Japanese fans, they don't, they don't cheer so much. They, yeah. <laughs> they appreciate. So they yeah. watch, something happens, clap, 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 silence. Yes. And I was like, okay, what's happening here? And to, like, you know, to, to put that switch on in your head that it's not not bad that they don't you know react like normal fans would mm. like normal yeah. like European fans or like mm. American fans would react um, but they appreciate that they 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 yeah they make it a lifestyle as well and like on the big moves they go oh 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 my god and then the total silence because they love what you, what what they see you know sure. and they. They, um, how 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 can I say they they chew up no they they, they chew up the art of it yeah uh, yes 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 that makes sense and it's not that they're silent because they're bored it's they're no. silent because they're appreciating yes yes it's a sign of respect it's yes um, absolutely we spoke to uh, Rocky Romero not that long ago and I was saying to him it's the I think the Japanese fans are treat it more of a legitimate sport don't they over there. Yeah. Yeah, as it should be. <laughs> it's... Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, I mean, uh, even comedy works for them. So, and mm. even if appreciate that sometimes much more than they like, you know, like do it in the European scene, because like, like some fans always think like, oh, comedy wrestling, it doesn't belong in there. But of course it does. Course you it need, does. Yeah. It, it, it's like a circus, right? Yeah. Some, yeah. some, you need the clown in there just to loosen it up. Exactly, yeah. Like I can't imagine. To be fair, I reckon without the comedy side of wrestling, personally, I don't know if I'd be as big of a fan as wrestling. It's the yeah. fact that there's so much variety, like you said. 
you've got the clown, you've got the serious side. That the whole mm-hmm. variety of it is what makes wrestling wrestling. That's yep. it. Now, there is somebody I did want to ask you about as well. Um, I know you wrestled him in TNA, and that's Josh Barnett. Yes. Could we could we see you pop up at Bloodsport at some point? Is that something that you'd love to do? Maybe, maybe, maybe. I mean, he owes me one because he nearly killed me with a power bomb. <laughs> 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 well, I think the most dangerous man in Europe kind of has to wrestle at Bloodsport at some point, right? <laughs> Sound, sounds like a deal for me. <laughs> and then you can yeah. get your revenge for that power bomb. <laughs> <laughs> What was it like working with Josh then? Great. It was great. Like, uh, um, I, I, like, you know, me being a fan of him as well, uh, and I saw him just like before, and he made his uh, Impact debut, and they were like, yeah, you're going to wrestle him. And I was like, holy shit, he's going to kill me. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was the first thing. I, I didn't know something about the power bomb, and seriously, it wasn't that bad. It looked bad, but it was like totally easy. Uh, no, it was it was an honor to stand in the ring with such a superstar. Seriously, like um, he is a big deal, and it made it made it feel so much bigger. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Now, I mean, I would love to see you in in blood sport as well. I just like Callum said, you've just got that. There's that vibe about you that you are just a legit badass, and I, and I want to see you everywhere. Yeah, I, would look- I think that would be great. Well, how about we just start like a hashtag, whatever. Just throw it out. I mean... We, we you- love starting hashtags. It's what we do. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Make it happen. <laughs> get you, get, we'll get you in blood sport. We're setting up a fight right now between you and Josh Barnett. That's all right. Sounds Let's like make- we're happen. playing fantasy okay. booking now. I like it. I like it. <laughs> now, obviously, before we, we, we wrap things up at some point, so we have to ask you as well, uh, about WXW, obviously. Of course. <laughs> we, we're big fans of WXW. What's it like for you working for them? For you? It's your home country, it's your promotion. Well, I actually don't work for them since 2018 anymore, but um, uh, worked for them since 2005 till 2018. It was like a, a, a pleasure, and I loved every, every bit of it. Um, and uh, for everybody who's working there, who's learning there, it's always, always a pleasure. I mean, my, my, my company right now is uh, uh, GWF, like German Wrestling yeah. Federation. Yeah. Uh, well, I'm the, the record champion, by the way, because like uh, no, no, <laughs> nobody can beat me. Um. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, no, say, saying that, no, WXW is like, like a big deal. And whoever tries... To, to, to come to Germany should have a look at uh, WXW, of course, at GWF as well, because like yeah. they, those are the two major promotions over there. Haven't, and, you, haven't you won every singles championship like in yeah. both of those companies as well? It, yes. In, in WXW, I'm like a one-time world champion, two-time unified world wrestling champion, two-time shotgun champion, uh, two-time tag team champion. I won twice uh, yeah. the shortcut rumble. Yeah. Yeah, I mean that's pretty impressive, right? <laughs> 15 karat gold, 2008. I was the first one to beat Brian Danielson in Germany. Jesus Christ, wow. that's, that's impressive just for one yes. company, man. Like, and saying and saying that Brian Danielson is like. The most amazing guy ever. I learned in that one match in 2008, we had so much, which some people don't even learn in a year. Well, I didn't to see that match. I've, yeah. That's, that's insane. Yeah. And, but on, yeah, on a uh, foot- you hear a lot of people say, don't you, that, that Brian's the best in the world. Um, he is. You can, you can confirm that. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. 100%. Now, we did speak to Alexander James uh, a few weeks ago, uh, and we asked, we asked him a question, so I'm going to ask you the same one. What, uh, we asked him, what's it like taking a chop from Walter? <laughs> happy birthday. <laughs> I just say happy birthday. <laughs> no, I think it was his birthday, and I said happy birthday, and I chopped him, and he was like, oh, my God. <laughs> It is 
because um, yeah, it can be pretty hard to take a chop. Yeah, because I um, I actually asked Kentakobashi and Go Shiyazaki how they train their chops, and they showed me that they just chopped the wall. Yeah, the wall. <laughs> the wall. <laughs> right. Okay, that's normal. <laughs> Brick wall. Yes. Yeah. That's... And, and, and I tried that, so I tried to get my chops as hard as I can, and. Um, <laughs> Maybe sometimes they sting a bit, but it's just a chop. Come on. Uh, yeah. One of the best parts of wrestling. It makes it's such a cool visual and makes a good noise. And we see each other. I'm gonna give you a chop. You you guys Please. give me one first, and and, you, I, and I give you one back. If, if we if we meet in person, you chop me. Uh, totally. For for a laugh, I'll give you one too, and then we can shake hands, and we'll have a, a new level of respect for each other. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> If, now, if, I'm a, if I'm still alive afterwards, if you yeah. haven't, like, if my heart hasn't <laughs> stopped. <laughs> See, the reason I asked that as well is because when we spoke to Alexander, he actually said that Ilya Dragunov has a harder chop than Volta. Does he? Really? That's, that's what, yeah, that's what Alexander said. told us, yeah. Alexander James is a pussy. <laughs> 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 Seriously, like chops, like chops can be hard. Like Ilya and 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 Walter's chops are hard as well, but um, it's it's you know it 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 demands on the day as well. If you if you're if you're warmed up, if if it's cold in the room, and sometimes yeah. you hit harder and whatever. I mean, chops chops are. I mean, they they belong to wrestling, and and sometimes they have a bit sound as good as well. Yeah, very true, man. Very true. Now, before I let you go as well, I know Callum's a huge fan of this promotion in America. Uh, am I right in thinking you wrestled the IWA Mid-South? Yes. Okay. Yes. Awesome. What was that? Callum is a huge, huge fan of that promotion. So, obviously, I have to ask you for Callum. What, what was it like working there? It was, it was great. Uh, like, um, I mean, I did, a, uh, I did a strong style tournament there. And uh, it was like there was not so many fans, but they were into it, and yeah. it, it was it was kind of my first time there. But they like reacted as soon as I came out, and then we traded some forearms, some chops, and everything. It was it was amazing. Like they're a very small, passionate crowd, aren't they? Absolutely. I always wanted to be a part of that, like to, to be a part of one of their shows, and. Uh, I made it on, on, on my list as well. So, yeah, it was, it, it was a, good, a good deal there. Yeah, That's awesome. Yes. Yeah, I mean, I'm a big fan as well, but Callum is a huge fan I, of that promotion. I'm a huge fan of uh, I'd wear Mid-South because it's one of the first companies I watched outside of WWE. So, yeah. I have, like a, a soft spot for I'd wear Mid-South. Nice. <laughs> um, obviously, before I let you go as well, John, this is where we let you plug your social medias, any merchandise. Yes, um, you can find me on Instagram and Twitter at lost underline rebel underline BB. And you can find my merchandise at SL, uh, what's the minus? What's, how do you call them minus? It's da minus? Uh, dash. 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 Okay, so SL dash wrestling dot DE slash bet dash bones. And you will find my merchandise there. I'll and put the link in the description. <laughs> yeah, please, please put it down somewhere. Here. It's it's here and there. Down here, and then, yeah. yes. and then I do have a advice for everyone listening right now: like winners never quit and quitters never win. That's the only way to go. Never let anybody tell you can because if you can believe it, if you can believe in yourself, and if you can dream it, you can do it. God damn, I'm inspired now. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> Jamie, maybe time. maybe we're not failures. Maybe we can do it. Absolutely not. Everybody, everybody can do whatever they wish to do because, like, everything is possible. I uh, absolutely, man, absolutely. My dad always wanted to be a fireman. Next week, he celebrates forty years in the fire service. So there we go. Amazing! Congratulations. There we go. Uh, wow. Anything can happen. You are absolutely right. But, John, please, please, uh, in the new year, come back on because we could talk to you 
more and more. Um, yeah. Whenever you want me on, I'm there. Dude, uh, for one of the scariest looking dudes I've seen in the ring, you're one of the nicest people we've ever spoken to. Thank Seriously. You. Thank you. And I appreciate it, man. We appreciate you. I'm going to go and watch yourself and Brian Cage in the rain yeah, match now. Same, same. Absolutely. The infamous rain match. It's amazing. And thank you, guys. It was an honor to like be on your show. Thank you for having me. Thank you so well, much. Thank you. John Badbones Klinger, we are ringsiders. <laughs>